Hi everyone. Uh, in the previous video, we discussed about the operation of del, okay, which is given by i cap del by del x plus j cap del by del y plus k cap del by del z. Okay, so operation of this del on a scalar quantity, okay, that we discussed, which we said grad phi and the physical significance of uh, grad phi, which is known as gradient of a scalar, right? So if you are uh, taking gradient of a scalar function, then what it will actually give you so that we discussed. Now in this class, we are going to discuss the operation of this del on a vector field. Okay, so if I will operate uh, this del operator, which is a vector, you can see all these you know, unit vectors, it is represented by the unit vector. So of course, it's a vector operator, vector differential operator. Now, when this del operator will be operated on a vector, it can be operated in two different ways. Either you operate it with a dot product or you operate it with a cross product del. Okay, and then you operate it with a cross product. So you can see this. So this is the cross and this is the dot right so vector products are of two types dot and cross cross product between two vector gives you a scalar quantity cross product between two vectors gives you a vector quantity so this is actually known as curl of a vector which we will discuss later what is the physical significance of curl of a vector field but here today we are going to discuss divergence of a vector field which is nothing but you know uh, the dot product of del or operation of del uh, operator on any vector field with a dot, right? So that is what is known as divergence of a vector field. So today we are going to discuss that um, divergence of a vector field. Let us now uh, write what is uh, actually mathematically what it represents. So we know the value of del and any vector A can be written as its components. So I cap and AX is the uh, X component of the vector. And similarly, J cap, the unit vector along Y, and then the component AY. Similarly, we can write K cap AZ as the AZ is the component in the Z direction. Now, if I will just write, you know, del dot A, then I need to write it as I cap del by del X plus J cap del by del Y plus k cap del by del z. This is my del operator. And then dot over the vector i cap ax plus j cap ay plus k cap az. So this is our vector a, right? So you know in a dot product only those same components i cap dot i cap will exist, j cap dot j cap will exist and k cap dot k cap will exist, right? i cap dot i cap, j cap dot j cap, k cap dot k cap will exist because of the cos theta value, okay? Cos zero because i cap and i cap, the angle between them will be zero. So cos zero is one, so that component will exist. Otherwise, all three mutual perpendicular axes, i cap, j cap and k cap. So any value like uh, the angle between i and j, j and k, k and i will be 90 degrees. So cos of 90 degree will be zero, that is, um, simple, you know, you all know that. So now I can write if I cap dot I cap, I will take I cap dot I cap will give us one because unit vectors magnitude one and cos zero is one. So we can write this value as del AX by del X plus J cap. Sorry, oh, sorry. And there will be no, you know, J cap dot J cap that will be one. So we got del A Y divided by del Y plus del a z divided by del z so this is what we will obtain so let me just rewrite it again so divergence of a vector field or when the del vector is operated on any del operator is operated on any vector field with a dot okay uh, then it gives us mathematically it gives us del ax by del x that is the variation of the magnitude of the x component of the vector field over x, right? Similarly, um, del a y divided by del or del a y by del y. 
plus del a z by del z variation of a z with respect to z so this is what we got mathematically and we call it divergence of a vector field now we need to understand the physical significance of divergence of a vector field okay what do you, what do you mean by uh, you know divergence of a vector field what actually it represents you know in terms of physics if you will see then what actually it gives you right that is what we need to find out so let us discuss that so let us discuss the physical significance of divergence so everybody is now aware of divergence what is divergence divergence is the operation of del okay on a vector field with a dot with a dot product right so that is uh, what is divergence now we need to see what is the physical significance of divergence so to see the physical significance of divergence what i am going to do is i'll make a parallel pipe parallel pipe means here i'm taking as a you know you know a cubed structure but you can see like you know the um, it's like you know six parallelograms actually fit but here for convenience as i'm going to show you x y and z coordinates i'm considering the angle is angle to be 90 degree right so let us uh, make a parallel pipe like this okay uh, parallel pipe rectangular parallel pipe we will take okay for example let me just draw this way this is a parallel pipe okay for example this is our parallel pipe and then we will take like you know i'm just identifying the coordinates okay here you can see those okay so mutually perpendicular axis here okay and then this is the other one right let us name this suppose this is x and this is our y coordinate and this is the z coordinate right now here what i'm doing is the dimensions over here okay for the parallel pipe let me take this uh, to be you know this dimension here your this is your dx along the x direction you can see similarly if i will take this as dy along the so you can see i am taking a infinitesimal volume if you will see dx dy dz these are infinitesimal you know dimension so dx dy and dz will actually represent an infinitesimal volume in space right so this is an infinitesimal volume in space dx dy dz right now suppose i will uh, consider a vector field okay let us consider a vector field uh, which is actually passing through you know this face this y and z plane okay let me just draw this okay suppose this is the vector field okay and the vector field is given by suppose i'm writing it as ax because it's the x component of a vector a so ax okay i'm considering the one dimensional motion first then we will see x y and z function of x y and z then what is ax let us define this ax ax is actually what the component of this vector field per unit area okay so what is ax ax is the component of the vector field along x axis or x direction per unit area this is what we said so what is ax ax is the component of the vector field along x direction per unit area this is what we said now when this vector field you know this ax component will enter the y z phase and will leave the uh, y z phase here after covering a distance of dx right along the x direction so there is no change in the dy and dz there is no change in the y and z so there is no change along y and z because it's moving from one this plane to here this plane this face right or the yz face actually so it covered a distance of dx okay so there is a change in the um, x coordinate okay which is now x plus dx right so i will write this vector field which is you know the x component has a change and what is that change i will write it as x plus dx so dx is the change in x direction when it moves from this phase y z to this phase here okay so x plus dx and then we have dy as unchanged and dz is unchanged right so let us now use 
simple mathematics to find out what is actually the change when the vector field enters the sex component of the vector field entered okay or we said the flux okay entered okay which is uh, ax is per unit area okay so flux per unit area entered here in this phase and left here uh, at the opposite phase right so and there is a change in the you know dimension here we got a dx right so we need to find out what is the actually change okay what happened here if i will calculate the change so what i need to do is i'm going to see what is the change so for that let me use a simple mathematics so i want to find out what is the change in that you know in that vector flux so let me just use a mathematical series which you are aware of i think so which is known as taylor series okay taylor series so let us use taylor series to find out this okay this difference okay so in taylor series what we can write i mean okay i'm just writing the original series then i will just take from that if the function is given this way f of x plus h right this can be expanded using taylor series as f of x plus h f dash x that is the derivative of uh, fx okay with respect to x x is the variable here okay and then you have h square by factorial 2 okay there was a technical problem we are going to use the taylor series to find the difference okay so taylor series i was writing so it is given as if i will write f of x plus h that is given by f of x plus h times f dash x partial differentiation of fx first derivative and then you have h square by factorial 2 f double dash x okay likewise or for higher orders you can also write like h cube by factorial 3 okay f triple dash 3 times the derivative partial differentiation plus so on okay you can write this this is uh, what this taylor series now if i will use this taylor series for this function ax x plus dx because there is no sorry there is no change in dy and dz so we got ax x plus dx this is the change when it um, left the other phase so if i will expand it using the same uh, you know taylor series okay and we will keep up to the first order because first order is enough higher order if you'll see here you know if you'll see this dx is actually nothing but your h here Okay, and dx is infinitesimal change. So if you will take h square by two, that is dx uh, square divided by factorial two, this is infinitesimal small. And if you will take for higher orders like h square, h cube and all, it will be very, very small. So we will ignore the higher orders and we will return of two, uh, the first two terms like this term. And then the next term is this, okay, where we consider this infinitesimal change or dx, okay, not the higher orders because practically it will be very very less as we have already defined dx dy and dz are infinitesimally small okay so now if i will write this ax x plus dx using taylor series i will expand and i will keep up to the first order only then i can write this to be ax x plus here i can write del ax by del x okay and then this is dx Okay, so I kept up to the first order here, hf dash x. So h is your dx here, and the first order derivative you can see the first uh, derivative that is del x by del x, right? So we'll keep this, and then we can find out then what is the flux? Okay, the flux entering and what is the flux leaving? Then we can take the difference between them. Okay, so the flux entering here in the diagram. As you saw, the flux entering, okay, sorry, entering per unit area, okay, per unit area, unit area was ax, okay, function of xyz, right, 
and then entering through the area if i will find out uh, the flux entering through what the phase y z phase we took so the infinitesimal area that is dy and dz i can rewrite it to be what to be ax multiplied with dy dz so this ax multiplied with dy dz gives us the flux entering through dy dz the flux entering through dy dz it gives us this right okay similarly we can uh, find out we can write the flux leaving uh, x plus dx right after you know the opposite uh, phase or uh, that is um, opposite dy dz phase so i can do that so let me just write the flux leaving at x plus dx that we got ax okay this is it and then we got del ax function of x and then del x dx this is what we got from the taylor series keeping up to the first order okay if you remember just now we did okay so by expanding in taylor series and keeping up to the first order right so the flux leaving at this okay through the area dy dz the same way you can multiply the area dy dz so this is what we said the flux entering and the flux the uh, sorry flux leaving and the flux entering we got is ax dy dz right now if you want to find out what is the um, net flux leaving right so the net flux or the change in flux if you want to find out then we can write what is the difference between these two so the net flux leaving the yz phase the amount of entering the amount of leaving then you can find out the change so that will be given by if i'll write the net flux okay entering and leaving is this so what is the change right so the net flux can be written as this value just now you know del ax function of x so del x function of x divided by del x dx right and multiplied with dy dz this is through the area infinitesimal area dy dz and minus the other value that is x dy dz this gives us the change okay or the net flux right or the change okay so if i will uh, write that then you can see this whole term x dy dz and this minus x dy dz will be cancelled out and you will remain with what uh, del ax okay by del x okay then you have dx dy and dz so this is what we got so this is along x direction so we got this for x direction what is the change in flux so what is the change in flux in x direction we got del ax by del x dx dy and dz right the same way we can do it for the uh, the y phase the other phases like y and z phases right so or else you can say the planes right xz and xy phases right so let us write that so in the x direction what we got just now i'm rewriting again x direction the change in flux we got is del ax by del x dx dy dz right similarly for y direction if i will write if i will write it for y direction i can write it to be del ay divided by del y sorry dx dy dz and similarly for z direction the same way if you will calculate considering the change in the z coordinate that is dz you can write it to be del az divided by del z dx dy and dz right so this is what we got respectively right so if i want to find out this is um, you know i this is the net flux like right? leaving x phase y phase and z phase respectively right so if you want to find out the net flux emerging out okay or coming out of the parallel pipe the parallel pipe that we considered right per unit volume per unit volume if i want to find out so if i will write the net flux emerging out or coming out of the parallel pipe the parallel pipe 
okay per unit volume per unit volume so we have considered a uh, elemental volume right the of the parallel pipe dx dy and dz so this will give you the volume so per unit volume if i find out net flux emerging out then we can write this to be what del ax by del x plus del a y by del y okay and del by del z of a uh, sorry del del by del z of az right del az by del z right so this gives us the net flux emerging out of the parallel of pipe net flux emerging out of the parallel pipe so if you are considering a infinitesimal volume like we did infinitesimal volume okay and uh, kept in a um, field right or a vector field is passing through it right this del dot a which you got the same thing del dot a actually gave you del x by del x plus del a y by del y plus del a z by del z is nothing but the net flux that is emerging out okay the net flux that is emerging out of um, this volume per unit volume right and the del z as well right so this way we can say like you know what is the net flux emerging out of the parallel pipe per unit volume now if somebody will ask you what is the physical significance of divergence okay divergence of a vector field divergence of a vector field gives you what 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 is the volume that you consider right and per unit volume what is the net flux coming out okay coming out of this uh, volume i mean per unit volume right that is represented by um divergence of a vector um we said right so now if you will uh, if you want to give some practical like you know some examples then we can say you know uh, like light flux flux of light light flux magnetic flux magnetic flux electric flux okay these are all example of you know the divergence okay so divergence we will uh, see more about it okay when we will do the electromagnetic equations okay and uh, you can just relate there what is actually your divergence and divergence of electric field will give you what divergence of magnetic field will give you what so that is uh, that is it uh, in this video we will come up with some numericals and some new concept in the next video thank you for watching